What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life, my name is Lucky, and today I'm back in the studio to talk about something that's a major problem. Banks are losing millions of dollars because of auto fraud. Now before I get started, I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, well, screw the banks, they rip everybody else off, you know, I'm glad they're getting burned. But there's something you need to realize. If banks are losing a lot of money, it affects you, the consumer, and it affects how you're gonna be buying cars in the future. I'm gonna explain all that and go into a whole lot of detail, but before I do, if you could do me a huge favor, and gently squeeze the like button for YouTube algorithm. I truly appreciate it. It helps you find more people like yourselves and enjoy automotive content. Also, please consider subscribing. I do post two times a week, so make sure you click the notification bell and let's get into the video. So about once a month, I get on a conference call with a few banks that I know and we talk about how the market is going. Obviously, we know that the actual repo rate is way up, delinquencies at an all-time high. Those are usually the things that we talk about and see if we can figure out some sort of solution. But one thing that kept popping up that's on a rise is auto fraud. A lot of people are turning in a lot of fraud fraudulent documents and doing flat out fake loans to get cars and it's affecting a lot of people and it's affecting the banks and their bottom line. Now, I know you guys are always like, screw the banks, who cares? You know, I'm glad to see them burn. And the reason why I wanna make this first part is to let you guys know how this affects everybody. So let's just say that, you know, you own a small business, you are either a plumber or a baker or something like that, and you wanna expand your business. You wanna hire maybe some more employees, maybe get some more equipment for your business or expand your operations. You traditionally go to a bank your small local credit union, maybe a small bank, you walk in there and you say, hey look, I'm a small business owner, I'm looking to get a few bucks so I can actually expand my business, can you guys help me? Traditionally, they usually say yes, but in this current climate, nine times out of 10, they're probably gonna say no, because one, a lot of the interest that are made off of auto loans is what helps fund the bank's future projects. Like if they wanna give you a mortgage, they wanna give you, um, you know, maybe money for another small business, some sort of credit cards, all this money is basically circling in the banks. And as they keep losing money every single quarter, and the more their books look bad, it gives the banks less money to lend out. And when this happens, unfortunately, everybody suffers. Not only the dealers, not only the banks, but the regular people as well. It's a complete circle. This is how this particular area affects everybody. I know a lot of you guys think I'm like crying wolf and the, the economy is gonna collapse and you know the car market's trash, but one of the things you have to understand is when this market actually does collapse and we do have major fallout, which we're on the brink of, it's gonna affect everybody. Not just people with good credit, not just people with bad credit or people in debt, it's gonna affect a multiple of things. So now that we got that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into why we're having so much auto fraud. Now, during the pandemic, everybody winded up getting a car they probably shouldn't have gotten, either because they didn't make enough money, they truly couldn't afford it, or their credit wasn't great enough. And the reason why this happened is a lot of banks basically relaxed all their lending rules. These are things put in line to make sure that we have good quality structured debt that the banks could collect off of. That's why after all this stuff fell apart, we're seeing record high delinquencies in repos. And unfortunately, when banks start to see this stuff, they start tightening up their lending. So as these credit restrictions keep getting tighter and tighter, it's getting harder and harder for people to actually buy the cars that they really want. So what banks and dealerships are seeing now are people coming in, let's say trying to buy a Mercedes Benz, come to find out that they don't have either the credit, the down payment, or the DTI to actually qualify for this car. DTI is debt to income. It basically calculates all your debt compared to what you're making and gives you a certain percentage of what you can spend. So now that we're going back to more of a traditional sense of lending, people are not being able to afford the cars they really want. So how are they overcoming this? The most obvious one is fake pay stubs. We've seen fake pay stubs almost triple, not double, triple in the last six months because people don't make enough money to actually afford these cars. So what do they do? They start lying. They go on paystubs.com or uh, Rockstar Paystubs or there's a bunch of these fake sites. One thing I'm gonna tell you guys about these sites is don't waste your time. Don't get the, the problem using it because most banks and dealers, we have things like Plaid and Experian where we can actually double check to see one, if that's a real company and two, it matches up with your bank records because if you're getting a check for $6,000 every week, so if I run your bank account and I see three NSFs and and you have $20 in your bank account, I know you're not making $6,000 a week. That's how banks and dealerships are able to check if you're full of crap. And if you're trying to use one of these ADP or Wells Fargo checks, we have 1-800 numbers that we can call and verify the actual check number, the company and everything else to verify that that's a real payment. So stop doing this. I see a lot of people trying to get in with these fake pay stubs. I see people on Fiverr, Craigslist, 
Um, even Facebook trying to sell these things, don't do it. Another big problem is fake bank statements. A lot of these people are basically saying they're self-employed or they got multiple side hustles, so they decide to use their bank statements as proof of income. And what they're doing is they're literally getting somebody that has good bank statements, deleting their name, and then putting their name up there. A few of the dealer groups that we talked to, they had the same bank statements over 13 times in one month because different people were using them over and over again. It wasn't until it actually got to a fraud department when these people weren't making their first payments or their first payment defaults or they're having issues verifying insurance when they started to dive deeper into these actual accounts and realizing that all these people came from the same bank statements. So now this is a big effect that's what's happening to dealers and this is why dealers need to watch out. Anytime we get fraudulent documents like that and the bank can prove that it's fraud, they have grounds to basically cancel that loan and shift it back to the dealer. Now, I know you guys are like, well, good, screw the dealer, but there's a lot of good dealers out there that don't deserve this. They're just trying to sell a car and now they wind up having to buy back these loans from the bank. Now, if these are like, like I said, 12 to 13 loans that they had, just imagine, let's say average, each average car is maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. You're talking you know, over $100,000 of a check they have to write back to this bank. And it's not like something like, I'll get to you later. Like They have to have it within five to seven days of transferring the cars back over to the dealership. And this is the straw that's breaking the camel's back when it comes to dealers, when it comes to fraud. Because what happens is the bank doesn't blame the customer, it blames the dealership which is kind of messed up. So they basically cancel all the lending and say, we're not gonna lend you any more money until you pay us back. But if the dealer can't afford to pay the bank back, the bank basically tells everybody that, hey, this dealer is a piece of crap. He doesn't pay his bills. You shouldn't work with him. And all of a sudden, that dealership that had maybe 10, 20 banks is down to maybe three or four banks because nobody wants to work with them because they see them as a liability. And once again, this is one more thing that makes it harder for the regular consumer to actually get an auto loan. Now, there's another big fraud that's going out. It's with fake identities and fake social security numbers. I've talked about it quite a few times on this channel. There are people out here that you can literally go to websites and buy fake driver's license from whatever states. Now, a lot of times you can get away with this if people are like just rushing through it. But there's so much fraud now that so many dealerships are losing money. We all have devices where we can scan or run your number from your ID to see if it's fake. I'm in a bunch of dealer groups and we literally make jokes every single week of people coming in with these fake IDs and these fake ass social security numbers thinking that they're gonna pull one over our eyes. There's so many people that are literally going out, buying cars with this fake credit, and then turning around and then trying to sell them on Facebook with no title for ten to $20,000. And if you think it's crazy, um, I don't know if I'll put a link here, but there are Facebook groups out here that actually sell cars with no titles. And a lot of them were purchased with actual fraudulent accounts. So fake driver's license, fake social security numbers, this is what we're seeing. And the bad thing is, it used to be maybe one out of a million. Now you're talking about one out of every 10,000 to 5,000 deals. So it's getting more prevalent and more and more people are jumping onto this. Now the next thing we're gonna be talking about is a CPN, which is basically like a fake social security number. These things are technically illegal. Now I know all these people are gonna be crying, it's not illegal, it's perfectly fine to own a CPN, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna tell you this, it's okay for you to own a CPN. But the second you use your CPN to actually defraud a bank or to obtain credit under false pretenses, that's when it gets illegal. So for all you fake credit gurus out there saying that this is the easy way to do it, we're gonna sell you these CPNs, it's not worth it. We have the software now, as soon as I run that shit, I know that it's a fake number and I just kick back your thing. First thing I'm gonna ask you for is a copy of your actual uh, social security number just to verify. And then also we're gonna look at either your passport or your tax returns. But if I run that number and you're 34 years old and you have zero tax returns in your name and you've never had a passport, I'm gonna find out really quickly. And those things are some of the ways we figure out if these CPNs are bad. Now, during a recession, unfortunately, a lot of these fake credit gurus are gonna come jumping out of the woodworks telling you that you could buy a brand new car with zero down if you buy their CPN or their whatever credit building profile where it could be maybe three to $8,000. Don't do it. Don't believe the hype, you're gonna get screwed. You're gonna get a number that doesn't work, they're gonna give you a bunch of trade lines that are probably crap, and the worst thing is they'll tell you they're good, but then as we basically go down this recession, those things, those trade lines, they could be, let's say, a $30,000 credit card, they could max it out in a week. They could have an auto loan on there, they could be delinquent. 
they don't care. They just charge you for it. By the time it shows up on your credit, it wind up could be hurting your personal credit. So if you do this with CPN, stay away. If you're doing it with your personal credit, try to stay away from buying actual trade lines. Go to your family member, say, hey, can you add me on your credit card as an authorized user? I don't need the credit card. I just need the credit history on my report. There are correct ways to do this. Banks are finding all this stuff out and we're seeing this more and more prevalent. So don't try it. I still see every day there's people on YouTube telling people how to scam dealers and there's literally networks. I've seen them on Facebook groups where they can tell you, oh, this is where you go to automatically run a car online and they won't double check stuff. I'm telling you, this stuff is pretty much disappearing. People are getting smart. And the biggest thing, once the banks found out about it and they're losing money, these banks will spend millions of dollars to figure out how to stop this. Now there's another type of auto fraud that's really, really high that not a lot of people are talking about is not the fact that they actually used fake ways to obtain the loan, but how they actually got the loan and decided never to pay or register the car. This was really prevalent during the pandemic because people didn't want to register the car, they were moving around, and then they come to find out they had fees, fines, and they were late payments, so they never registered the car so they couldn't track them down or find them with no plates. We're getting to a point now where we're out of the pandemic. The DMVs are open, there should be no reason why you can't register your car, and we're still seeing this at record high numbers. People are purposely buying cars, never making a single payment, canceling the insurance the day after doing it, and they're just driving the car around until they basically take it. Now, sometimes you can get away with this, and I've seen people drive cars for two, three years without getting them taken away, but you can get it popped as of early of tomorrow. But every time somebody does this, like I said, it doesn't just hurt the dealership, and the bank, it hurts the consumer because that's one more percentage point that the clock's gonna tick the other way where you're not gonna be able to afford whatever current car you're trying to buy. Now, it's gonna get worse because as we watch these people basically walking away from their cars because they're either upside down, they can't buy a new car or whatever else, they're gonna be looking for more ways to get another car that they can't afford, and their only choice is to commit more auto fraud. So unfortunately, this issue is gonna kind of spiral out of control and get bigger and bigger as we go deeper into this recession. And if we do have one of these dominoes, which is a major domino falling, where we're gonna see unemployment drop, we're gonna see a lot of people walk away from their cars or their car values drop, this is when I think it's gonna rear its ugly head and really pop out. But this is something that's been on my radar for the last few months that we've been talking about, and now it's getting to the point where, like I said, dealers and banks are really worried about it. And one thing you have to remember is as we go deeper into this recession and as these banks start tightening up on lending, the only good thing that comes out of this is dealerships being forced to lower their prices to actually move cars because as you can see, you drive around every dealership, they're full of cars. The supply is finally there, but the demand is not. So this is the only good thing that's gonna come out of this is the actual prices dropping a little bit. So if you're patient and you just take your time, Use that money that you're gonna to use to buy one of these fake credit profiles or buy some of these fraudulent things. Pay down your bills, build your credit, and just be patient and wait. So let me know in the comments section what you guys currently think about your market. Are you seeing a lot of fraud? If you're a dealer or a car salesman, do you see a lot of stuff like this coming into your dealership? Um, if you're a regular person, did you know that a lot of this stuff was going on? What are some of your thoughts, your concerns? Also, if you're a small business owner, have you been turned down for a loan recently? If you've tried to get a mortgage, did they tell you anything about your DTI? Are they being more strict? Because like I said, everything affects lending when it comes to the automotive industry. Everybody's always worried about the mortgage industry, not the auto lending industry. And I tell people that there's over one point, I think $8 trillion in auto loans out there now. And that's just with banks that are FDIC regulated that report this information, not including all the buy here, pay here lots, all the title loan companies, we're probably closer to $2 trillion. So just think about all that money out there that's in auto loans that's subjectable to having these types of problems. And remember, when these problems hit, it affects all markets because not only banks, credit unions, mortgage companies, everybody that has any type of collateral backed asset that borrows money from the Fed, hedge funds, or anybody else is gonna tighten the restrictions and get less and less money because they're all trying to outrun the bad debt. So like I said, this does have a circle effect on everybody that's watching this this video. But anyways, I thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. Once again, follow me on Instagram at Lucky Lopez, and we'll see you next video.